threatening with a deep, gravelly voice. Now, the voice came courtesy of Kansas City Chief Tackle Jim Tyre, who once caught Ben in the throat during a game. The big and scary part? Well, Ben took care of that all by himself. It's Ben Davidson, right? Yeah. Whatever happened to Ben Davidson? He's around somewhere. This is Ben Davidson. The former silver screen barbarian played like one when he was with the Oakland Raiders from 1964 to 1971. He was a three-time AFL All-Star and earned a reputation as the most notorious villain on the league's most intimidating team. Oh, my God, he bust some helmets. He has bust some helmets. And plus, he was a showman also. The handlebar mustache. I just uh, grew that, and there was no attempt to look menacing. I uh, hope my play was menacing enough. It was, especially after the whistle. If you make a tackle, and Ben is not laying next to you, duck. Because here comes Ben. Ben would hit the quarterback while he was getting in the car with his girlfriend after the ball game. That was not a late hit to Ben. Davidson was also fond of leg whips and spearing. That's just the way I was taught to play football, tackle with your head. And we did do a lot of neck exercises uh, to make sure we didn't hurt ourselves. As if that was the main concern. Anyway, it, it worked out for me. Come on, Ben, hit him anyway! Come on, Ben, let's go! And we were penalized a lot. We'd have games where we get 200 yards of penalties, and Ben would have 75 or 80 of them. Big Ben became a folk hero. Soon, Hollywood came calling for the not-so-gentle giant with the flair for the dramatic. By the end of his football career, Ben had already appeared in such diverse films as the 1970 hit M.A.S.H. and the X-rated classic Behind the Green Door, in a non-graphic role, of course. Not great for dialogue, and got a certain amount of notoriety from that. The movie turns out to be, you know, the pornographic hit of, of the century. So every week, for most of the season, an envelope would come. And in this envelope would be these letters written by people. Most of them are misspelling, calling them a pervert, just a degenerate. You are helping send our youth to drugs and hell. <sighs> we thought it was great. I said, Ben, next time, can I go with you? I want to be in the film with you. This would not fly in today's NFL, nor would Davidson style of play. Nowadays, quarterbacks are protected like endangered animals. No tackling low, no driving into the ground, and absolutely no hits to the head. I don't think I'd make it in the NFL today. This was Ben Specially and his penchant for headhunting was immortalized in pictures. Well, there's only uh, one small detail missing in that picture, and that's uh, Bob Greasy doesn't have the ball, but he had just gotten rid of it. <laughs> just a minor detail. In my defense, uh, that was legal, and if you hit a quarterback in the face, there was no penalty for that, and knocked him down, that was a tackle. So uh, life was simpler in the old days. Soon, the league took steps to safeguard the game's glamour quarterbacks, like New York's Broadway Joe Namath. We play there in 66, and we're in the bus going to the game. Ben sitting next to me, and I'm looking out the window, and here comes a limousine up. And the window rolls down, and it's Namath, and he's got, a, he's got that fur coat on, and he waves at the bus, right? So I never saw a player like this. Is this something? 
And prior to the game, Joe Namath had talked about how we were dirty players and this and that. I uh, always felt that Oakland's defense wasn't quite as strong as Kansas City's defense. So I would rather, offensively speaking, play against Oakland. So we get to the game, Ben hits him, and he hits him so hard, I thought the guy was dead. So that next year, we go to play him, and they station a referee behind the quarterback, and he starts yelling, lay off. Don't touch him, leave him alone. I mean, that's not their job. Their job is to throw a flag after you uh, whack him, not uh, tell you not to. One time down, you were down the end, in fact, in the end zone. Yeah. Davidson come at you, and it's, he could have got the hell out of you. Then. Oh, he, he could have. The referee was he right there telling him, stop, 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 stop. He, the ball was gone. He could have wrapped me. I wish yeah. he would have. That's 15 yards. Davidson came to embody the early Raiders mystique, a surly band of rogues who pushed the league's rules and even the team's owner to the limit. Tying up Al Davis's son one day, uh, actually taped him up, made a mummy out of him and left him there between morning practice and afternoon practice in Santa Rosa, taped up, and uh, it's a wonder he didn't die. But Madden liked that kind of stuff. He thought, look, look at them, they're ready. They're getting ready to play. Look what they've done to the owner's son. So. Uh, <laughs> the game's original bad boy was far less menacing away from football. In 1971, we set out to capture the gentle side of Ben in a movie that marked my first foray into non-football cinematography. There, that's me with the camera and the hair. We spent three days filming Ben Davidson and his motorcycle in the California countryside. Here was the game's most feared renegade seeking solitude on winding roads along the beach and to really drive the point home through a field of yellow flowers. Sure, the hunter. Uh, that was a, a field of wild mustard, and soon after that, they built a Bank of America there, so that uh, there's no more solitude there. That's big money there now. You guys ready to swim? Not too cold today for you, is it? We even captured Davidson, the swim instructor, okay. and loving father of three. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. All right, build up your legs on this one. Get strong legs so you can play football when you grow up. Fortunately for Ben, hardly anyone saw our film. Thus, his tough guy image was maintained. After he retired, Ben's biking prowess landed him apart as a gang leader in the black exploitation classic, The Black Six. Ladies, bikes, and fighting, that's our kicks. We're the ones they call the Black Six. The Black Six were comprised of six NFL players, including Carl Eller, Mean Joe Green, and Willie Lanier. But the movie's plot raised more questions than answers. Like, what are they doing on a farm? And why is Willie Lanier petting a goat? Whoa! Hey, man, watch out for the goat. Not a great show place in my uh, acting talent. We'll ride with you guys. I ain't thumped ahead in about a week. But it was another one of my jobs. Showbiz. Davidson would work again. He guest starred on numerous television shows like Happy Days and Chips. And he also appeared in over 20 commercials for Miller Lite. The Lite's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it tastes great. What I like about it is it's less filling. Because when you're in a hot match like this, you can't afford to get filled up. You have the time? Yeah. About 8.30. Yeah, thanks. But his greatest role may have been opposite Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 1981 movie Conan the Barbarian. You. I got to be the evil Rexor, leader of bad guys. Kill them! Kill them all. <laughs> I think that might have been about all I said. Ultimately, Davidson will be less remembered as the really tall bad guy with the cheesy wig than the really tall defensive end with the awesome mustache. 
He excelled in an era of football when villainy trumped ordinary, when it was good to be bad. Ben was one of the first to realize this and capitalize on it. Well, my little girls need a new pair of shoes. And my wife needs a new uh, dress and uh, maybe a new apartment house somewhere. I don't know. While Davidson's enormous stature did not get him into the Hall of Fame, he did have a hand in the induction of others. You know, I know I go into the Hall of Fame as a coach, and I know that I go into the Hall of Fame because of my players and what they did. All my players that are out there, stand up, my family, stand up, stand up. Just take your day. Remember Big Ben Davidson, you remember all these guys. I mean, I mean Fred Litnikoff, the whole, the whole thing, Big Ben Davidson there. I mean, no, no, stand up, stand up, Ben. You, 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 stand up, enjoy the moment. This is ours, a whole bunch of you. I love you, thank you very, very much. Coach John Madden, when he went in the Hall of Fame, said he'd never really had a job, never really had to work in his life. He's always gotten to do fun things, and I'm kind of the same way. I always figured anything I got out of football was all pretty much a gift. Everything worked out in the long run. I had some fun in life and got to do a lot of interesting things. When we return. I think it was wrong. I think the NCAA really took it too far. I think that I really believe they used SMU as an example.